alayhi salam. So without further ado, I'd invite, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Qari Imam Abu Shatri once again up here for the penultimate time to recite for us the verses relating to Nuh alayhi salam. And afterwards, I invite Sheikh Muiz Bukhari to come up on stage and talk to us about the life and the lessons of Nuh alayhi salam. Uh, Qari Sahib, it's up to you. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أرسلنا نوحا إلى قومه أن أنذر قومك من قبل أن يأتيهم من قبل أن يأتيهم عذاب أليم قال يا قوم إني لكم نذير مبين أن يعبدوا الله واتقوه وأطيعون يغفر لكم من ذنوبكم ويؤخركم إلى أجل مسمى إن أجل الله إذا جاء لا يؤخر لو كنتم تعلمون قال رب إني دعوت قومي ليلا ونهارا فلم يزدهم دعاء وإني كلما دعوتهم لتغفر لهم جعلوا أصابعهم جعلوا أصابعهم في آذانهم واستغشوا ثيابهم وأنصروا وأنصروا واستكبروا استكبارا ثم إني دعوتهم جهارا ثم إني أعلنت لهم وأسررت لهم إسرارا فقلت استغفروا ربكم إنه كان غفارا يرسل السماء عليكم مدرارا ويمددكم بأموال وبنين ويجعل لكم جنات ويجعل لكم جنات ويجعل لكم أنهارا ما لكم لا ترجون لله وقارا وقد خلقكم أطوارا ألم تروا كيف خلق الله سبع سماوات طباقا وجعل القمر فيهن نورا 
وجعل الشمس سراجا والله أنبتكم من الأرض نباتا ثم يعيدكم فيها ويخرجكم إخراجا والله جعل لكم الأرض بساطا لتسلكوا منها سبلا فجاجا قال نوح رب إنهم عصوني واتبعوا من لم يزده ماله وولده إلا خسارا ومكروا مكرا كبارا وقالوا لا تذرن آلهتكم ولا تذرن ودا ولا سواعا ولا يغوث ويعوف ونسرا وقد أضلوا كثيرا ولا تزيد الظالمين إلا ضلالا مما خطيئاتهم أغرقوا فأدخلوا نارا فلم يجدوا لهم فلم يجدوا لهم من دون الله أنصارا وقال نوح رب لا تذر على الأرض من الكافرين ديارا إنك إن تذرهم يضلوا عبادك ولا يلدوا إلا فاجرا ولا يلدوا إلا فاجرا كفارا ولا يلدوا إلا فاجرا كفارا رب اغفر لي ولوالدي ولما دخل بيتي مؤمنا وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات ولا تزد الظالمين إلا تبارا صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي وسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد بن عبد الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أفضل صلاة وأتم تسليم أما بعد I commence by praising, exalting, and glorifying our Maker, the Supreme King of all kings, to whom all dominion, all rule, all might, and all power belongs to. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. 
I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to shower his choicest of blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, his family members, his companions and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyam. My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam, I would like to start off by reading the ayah where our maker subhanahu wa ta'ala, he states in Surah Yusuf, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبَرَةٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ He states that indeed, definitely, in their stories, i.e. the stories of the prophets, as well as the nations before us, there is a ibarah. There are lessons, there are beautiful lessons to be derived لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ For those of intellect, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all of those of intellect, as well as those who, the doors of understanding have been opened for us. These stories have been mentioned in the Noble Quran by our Maker subhanahu wa ta'ala for a specific purpose. And this is the reason that we discuss these stories, the stories of the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. So for this evening, inshallah ta'ala, we will be discussing the story of the first messenger, of the first Rasul to be appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was the first Rasul, the first messenger, as well as the first messenger from the Ulul Azm. I'm sure most of you might be aware, the Ulul Azm, they are five special prophets, great prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first of them is Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, and then obviously Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, and then finally our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Please remember salawat whenever I mention his beautiful name. So five of them, and from them, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam was the first. Now one might wonder, okay, if he was the first messenger, then what, what about Adam alayhi salatu wasalam? Wasn't he before Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam? Well, we have a hadith that has been recorded by Imam Ibn Hibban in his book, where someone asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam in regard to Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, as to whether Adam alayhi salatu wasalam was a Nabi. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, he clarified and he answered the question by stating, yes, wa nabiyun mukallam. That yes, he was a Nabi who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to, Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. And then in the famous hadith of the intercession that would take place on the day of Qiyamah, the, the hadith is pretty long, in that mankind would go to Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam and say, Oh Nuh, you are the first of messengers, please intercede on behalf of us. So from these narrations we understand that Adam alayhi salatu wasalam was the first Nabi, and obviously the first human being, is our father Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. He was the first Nabi to be appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam was the first Rasul to be appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a fine distinction, a fine difference between a Nabi and a Rasul. Very swiftly, there are a number of opinions that I'll mention, the ones that are widely known. The first opinion is that a Nabi is an individual whom a, a new Sharia, a new legislation is not given to. Instead, he comes after a Rasul and he follows up with the same legislation uh, that the Prophet, that the Messenger who came before him came with. And a Rasul is an individual sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, appointed by Allah azza wa jal with a new Sharia, with a new legislation. And a good example, after all examples bring about clarity, a good example to state in this regard would be Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and Harun alayhi salatu wasalam. Now Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, he was a Rasul, a messenger. And Harun alayhi salatu wasalam, he was a Nabi, a prophet. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam was given a legislation, a Torah. He was given the Torah. As for Harun alayhi salatu wasalam, who came after Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, he basically followed up the legislation of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, i.e. the Torah. There are other opinions as well. One other opinion that I would like to mention is that a Nabi, is an individual sent to a believing nation. A Nabi is an individual sent to a believing nation to remind them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and perhaps to expound, to teach them about the legislation of the messenger who came before that particular Nabi. Whilst a, a messenger, a Rasul, is an individual sent to a disbelieving nation. Sent to a disbelieving nation. Okay, now coming to the story of Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. After Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, there were many... Purun that passed by. 
Now, Qurun is the plural of Qarn, and it can be translated as centuries, as well as thousands and thousands of years. Thousands and thousands of years. There were many years that passed by, and mankind remained upon Tawheed, upon worshipping one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were upon monotheism. But after some time passed by, Shaitan, our sworn enemy, he got the better of mankind. And how did this happen? There were five individuals who were extremely righteous individuals. And, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions these individuals in Surah Nuh. These individuals, they went by the names Wad, Suwa'a, Yaghuth, Ya'uq, and Nasr. Wad, Suwa'a, Yaghuth, Ya'uq, and Nasr. Five righteous individuals who used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ardently. They were so righteous, so pious. And after they passed away, people were heartbroken. They were so saddened. They were filled with grief in regard to the demise of these individuals that Shaitan seized the opportunity to come in and instill in their hearts, why don't you put up statues in remembrance of these individuals? Why don't you put up effigies in remembrance of these individuals? To remember these individuals who perhaps, you know, keep their memories fresh. And they thought, yes, why not? It's a good idea. And they put up statues of these five individuals. Wad, Su'a, Yaghuth, Ya'uf, and Nasr. They put, up five, they put up five statues, five effigies, and they started to remember these five individuals through these statues, through these idols. And after a few generations passed by, each generation that passed by, they thought about the previous generation. Say the first generation that created these statues and effigies, they put it up to remember the statues. The next generation that came after, they saw their fathers perhaps going about these statues and remembering them. They thought, why don't we glorify them? Why don't we exalt them? Generation after generation went on and finally it resulted in them falling into the pit of associating partners unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first individual to be worshipped alongside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was the individual Wad. But he was a righteous individual. A righteous slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But after his demise, the people put up statues of all these individuals we just mentioned. And they started to worship these individuals instead of Allah azza wa jal. And this was the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. As Allah azza wa jal, he mentioned in Surah Nuh, just like the Shaykh uh, read the ayat, Inna arsalna Nuhan ila qawmihi an anadhir qawmaka min qabli an yatiyahum adabun alim. That indeed we sent Noah to his people saying, warn your people before there comes to them a painful punishment. So Noah alayhi salatu wasalam, he was appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go warn his nation, to warn his people. He went to them. Qala ya qawmi inni lakum nadirun mubin. O my people, indeed I am to you a clear warner. And his story is mentioned across a number of surahs. So inshallah ta'ala, I'll, I'll try to mention the ayat that are related to the story of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, because after all time is of the essence that I'll be trying to mention the whole story of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, or more or less lessons derived from the story of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. so Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, he started propagating and started reminding the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but the people they were not interested they didn't want to listen to Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, especially uh, the leaders of the of that particular nation the important people, the, the elite of the, of the nation. They went to him, فَقَالَ الْمَلَأُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ قَوْمِهِ مَا نَرَاكَ إِلَّا بَشَرًا مِثْلَنَا وَمَا نَرَاكَ تَبَعَكَ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ هُمْ أَرَاذِلُنَا بَادِيَ الرَّعِ وَمَا نَرَى لَكُمْ عَلَيْنَا مِنْ فَضْلٍ بَلْ نَظُنُّكُمْ كَاذِبِينَ They went to him and they said, مَا نَرَاكَ إِلَّا بَشَرًا مِثْلَنَا We don't see anything special in you. You are nothing but a man just like us. What's so special about you? How can you be a prophet? And then they went on to say, and we see only the poor, only those of, you know, little intellect. They are the ones following you. The, the, the great numbers are with us. We see that only a small number is with you. We don't think that, you know, you have come with the correct message. And, and they went on to make a mockery out of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in Surah Ankabut that Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, he strove hard. He strove for many, many years calling his nation, calling them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In certain books of history, it is mentioned that Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam was appointed as a prophet at the age of 40. At the age of 40. And then in Surah Ankabut, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he states, 
ولقد أرسلنا نوحا إلى قومه فلبث فيهم ألف سنة إلا خمسين عاما that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, we certainly sent Nuh to his people, and he remained amongst them a thousand years minus 50. In a sense, he remained with them for 950 years. To scholars of tafsir, they mention that this was not the lifespan of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, but instead this was the period of propagation. This was the period of da'wah. Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, he called them for 950 years. According to other scholars, like Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum and others, they state that Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, he lived for a total of 1,050 years. According to other scholars, 1,100 years, 1,200, even 1,500 years. There's a difference of opinion in regard to how long Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam lived for, but in regard to how long he propagated, this has been clearly stated in the Noble Quran, 950 years. But what is established is that Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam was the prophet to live for the longest, the longest. There is a particular narration mentioned by Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu where he states that Malakul Maut, he came to Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam when he was about to take the soul of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam and he addressed Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam saying, oh the longest, in the sense, oh the prophet who has been given the longest of lives, he addressed him by saying, Oh, the Prophet who has been given the longest of lives. Can you tell me how it felt to live for so long on the face of this earth? And you know what Nuh said? He said, for me, it was like entering a room that had two doors. For me, it was like entering a room that had two doors. I entered through one door. I stayed in the middle of the room for a few moments. And then I exited through the other door. And he was the one who lived the longest, according to certain narrations, 1,400 to 1,500 years. Allahu Akbar. Then just imagine, what about the life that you and I, we have been blessed with? And how much we need to strive to do as much to please as possible to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm sure most of you might be aware of the story of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. It has been recorded in the book of Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah. And if I'm not mistaken, Abu Huraira radiallahu anh, he makes mention of the narration. Malakul Maud, he goes to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Take his soul. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, the minute he saw Malakul Maud, gave him one blow. He gave him one blow. Now don't think it's surprising. It's Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. It's not surprising at all. He gave him one blow. Basically, he gave Malakul Maud a black eye. He gave Malakul Maud a black eye. Malakul Maud was stunned. I couldn't believe it. And, and think of it. Who would give Malakul Maud a black eye other than Musa alayhi salatu wasalam? Malakul Maut goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, hadith is in Bukhari, authentic narration, mentioned by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not fairy tales. وَمَا يَمْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيُ الْيُوحَىٰ He does not speak out of his own desires, but he speaks with divine revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Malakul Maut goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says, Ya Allah, you sent me to a slave who does not wish to die, who does not wish to pass away. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, go back to him and tell him, that he may place his hand on the back of a thawr, on the back of a bull or a cow. And for each hair that touches his palm, he will get an extension. He will get an extension of a number of years. If I'm not mistaken, it's a thousand years. He'll get an extension of a thousand or hundred years. I'm not sure about the narration. But anyway, a long number of years. He'll get an extension of many years for each hair. So just imagine how many hairs. I mean, you touch the back of a bull, how many hairs would touch your palm? He would get the extension of so many years. So Malakul Maut, he comes back and he reports to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam then asks him, what after this? What after this? Malakul Maut, he said, well, eventually, I will come after that. I will come after that. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, then he said, what's the point? Take my soul now. If I have to die after that, then what's the point? Take my soul now. Imam ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, rahimahullah, famous scholar, he wrote the, the, the sharah, the famous sharah, Fatih al-Bari, of the book of Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah. He makes commentary in regard to this particular hadith, and he states that you should not misunderstand the hadith that perhaps Musa alayhi salatu wasalam was not ready to meet Malakul Maut. Because in general, in regard to the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are given a choice. They are given a choice by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as to whether they wish to pass away now or later on. And in this regard, as to why Musa alayhi salatu wasalam gave Malakul Maut a black eye, was because Malakul Maut came in the guise of a human being and he entered the house of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. He entered 
the house of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. So just imagine, I mean, if somebody enters your house, maybe you won't give him a black eye, but you're not going to be happy. And Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, as you all know, the person quick to temper. So he gave Malakul Maut a black eye because he wasn't aware that this individual was Malakul Maut initially. But after he came the second time, then obviously he knew that he was Malakul Maut sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So coming back to the story of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, even after living for so many years, he states that it was the similitude was like entering a room and exiting it after a few moments. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, you and I, According to the words of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, the lifespan of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, 60 to 70 years, not thousands of years. How short in comparison? Let's strive to use every single second that we have to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Time is so, so, so valuable. I mean, a second passes by, you're never ever going to get it back. A minute passes by, you're never ever going to get it back. Time is of the essence, as they say. It's so, so important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears upon time in many a place in the Noble Quran. Wal Asr, Wal Duha, Wal Layl, Wal Fajr, Wal Nahar. In so many places, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He promises upon different portions of time to highlight what? To highlight the importance of time. Time is so, so important. So let us all, you know, derive this lesson from the story of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. Now, obviously, this can be derived from many other stories too. But let us let this lesson, you know, go deep into our hearts so as so that we could perhaps think about time, value time, and know for a fact that death is just ahead of us. Every soul shall inevitably taste death. And according to the words of the Prophet ﷺ, make excessive remembrance or think about death often because it is the terminator of pleasures. Because at times we tend to become engrossed with the fake pleasures of this worldly life. But the more we remember that, it destroys the fake whales of pleasure that this dunya adorns herself with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the doors of understanding for all of us. So Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, he propagated for a total of 950 years. And after propagating for so long, for so, so long, there was just a handful of people who believed in Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. Just a handful. According to certain reports, just 80 of them. Other reports, 50 of them. And there are even certain historians who state that only... Ten of them believed in, or rather responded to the message that Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam came with. His wife did not believe in him. His own son did not believe in him. So he strove for so hard. And then he cries unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was after a long period. He tried all methods. He used to call them day and night. It was not a part-time job. His da'wah was not a, not, not a part-time job. He called them day and night. He called them towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until finally, they, the people, they came to Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam and they said, قَالَ يَا نُوحُ قَدْ جَادَلْتَنَا فَأَكْثَمْتَ جِدَالَنَا فَأْتِنَا بِمَا تَعِدُنَا إِن كُنْتَ مِنَ الصَّادِقِينَ They said, oh Nuh, you have disputed us and you've been frequent in disputing us. So bring us what you threaten us of if you should be from those who speak the truth. Because he was warning them of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were so arrogant, they were so proud, that they came up to him and said, Look, if you're telling us about this punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you keep reminding us of this punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we have had it. Just bring it on. We're ready to face it. Bring it on. We're ready to face it. No, alayhi salatu wa salam. He realizes and he comes to a conclusion that these people, they're not going to change. They're not going to change. And they were trying their level best to dissuade the people who had turned to him. The people who had turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were trying to make them also, you know, come back to the path of shirk and associating partners unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finally, Nuh alayhi salatu wa he raises his hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he cries out, وَقَالَ نُوحُ رَبِّ لَا تَذَرْ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ مِنَ الْكَهَفِرِينَ دَيَّهَارَا إِنَّكَ إِنْ تَذَرْهُمْ يُضِلُّوا عِبَادَكَ وَلَا يَلِدُوا إِلَّا فَاجِرًا كَفَّارًا He says, O oh Allah, لا تذر على الأرض من الكافرين ديارا Do not leave upon the earth from the disbelievers, even one of them. Do not leave anybody. Do not leave anyone 
who is disbelieving in you upon the face of this earth. إِنَّكَ إِمْتَذَرْهُمْ يُضِلُّ عِبَادَكَ وَلَا يَلِدُ إِلَّا فَاجِرًا كَفَارًا If you leave them, they will mislead your servants, they will mislead your slaves. وَلَا يَلِدُ إِلَّا فَاجِرًا كَفَارًا And they will not beget, in the sense, their generations, the generation that will come after them, will only be sinners, transgressors, the ones who transgress your limits, Ya Allah, the ones who disbelieve in you, Ya Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He answered the dua of His Prophet, Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. And it was revealed unto Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam, وَأُوحِيَ إِلَىٰ نُوحٍ أَنَّهُ لَنْ يُؤْمِنَ مِنْ قَوْمِكْ إِلَّا مَنْ قَدْ آمَنْ فَلَا تَبْتَئِسْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْعَلُونَ Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam, it was revealed unto him that no one will believe from your people except those who have already believed. In the sense that those of Tawbah have been closed shut. As you all know, the doors of Tawbah for us are currently open. They're currently open. They're wide open. Two occurrences would make them close shut. Basically, one is a, a great phenomenon, and that is the sun rising from the west, which is one of the major signs of the day of Qiyam. The minute the sun rises from the west, the doors of Tawbah will be slammed shut. And even if you were to cry tears of blood after that, your Tawbah will not be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us all turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before it's too late. And the other occurrence is before you come to the stage of Sakarat. Before you come to the throes of death, before Malakul Maut comes in front of you. Because the minute you enter Sakarat, just like uh, the Sheikh before me, Muhammad Salah, he was mentioning that when Fir'aun tried to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was after he had witnessed everything, it wasn't accepted from Fir'aun. Likewise, when Malakul Maut comes in front of you, and now that you've witnessed everything and the whales have been lifted, you will try to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that point, that tawbah will not be accepted by you. In regard to the people of Nuh, when he lifted his hands and when he made dua unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the doors of tawbah were slammed shut. And Allah Azza wa Jal revealed unto Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam, he commands him to build a ship. To build a ship. Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam, he moves to the outskirts of the city and he starts to build the, sh the ship. The people started to make a mockery. They started to, uh, you know, come and jeer at him. And they said, when have you now taken over the profession of carpentry, O oh Noah? Why have you started to build a ship in the middle of the desert? Who's going to carry this ship to the water? I mean, how are you going to get this ship to a river or the sea, perhaps? It's on dry land. How foolish of you that you're building a ship and putting in so much of effort because it wasn't a tiny, a, a tiny raft. It was a huge ship. And Noah, alayhi salatu was striving hard. According, according to certain historians, he had, you know, collected wood from far and wide. He was building this huge ship under the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was being helped by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. Because Nuh alayhi salatu wa he knew that the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is about to descend. He's about to descend. And these people, they were making a mockery. They were jeering at him. They kept coming around and, you know, making fun of him. He said, you are making fun of us now and there will be a time when we will make fun of you. Nuh very calmly. From, from his story, you understand that he was an individual filled with perseverance, filled with patience. He was not an individual who gave up so easily. I mean, even he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After 950 years, he strove so hard. It was just not after a couple of years, he did not give up. After 950 years, he cries unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even at this point, when he was commanded to build a ship, he did not give up. He built the ship with so much of difficulty and then he waited for the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentioned in Surah Hud, Hatta idha jaa amruna wa faharat sannur. So it was until when our command came, wa faharat sannur. Now, there's a little bit of um, a discussion here. Wa faharat sannur in the sense, the Arabic language, you can literally translate it as the oven overflow. In the sense, the nur can be directly translated as an oven. The oven overflow. So there's a deeper meaning in this, where it was until recently, I think it was last year, there was this article I was reading on uh, in the BBC, that there was a scientist who had recently found out that there are actually oceans of water under the Earth's mantle. Oceans of water. From this ayah, we understand what farat can do in the sense, because the word fara here gives the meaning of fawran, which means, for example, when there's water, ma'un fil qidri, 
When there's water in a pot and when it's boiling, so you have water gushing out from the earth's mantle. It was hot, boiling water. It was obviously because of the molten lava that is towards the core of this planet. So water just started to gush out from the cracks of this earth. It started to gush out from everywhere. The heavens broke asunder. There was water from all corners coming down. There was so much of water.
There are a number of lessons that can be derived, but the most important is the fact that and this is something in general. When you look at all of the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, they were tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one can't help but remember the narration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when, the, when someone asked him, Ya Rasulullah, of all the individuals who are the ones tested the most by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? He did not say the ones who are tested the most by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the transgressors, the ones who have crossed the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sinners perhaps. No. You know what he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? The ones who are tested the most by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-anbiya, the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thumma al-amthal fa al-amthal. Then the, the next, after them, are the, the ones who are righteous, after which the, the very best. The very best after them, and then the very best after them. Thumma al-amthal fa al-amthal. And then he said, Allahu alayhi wa alayhi wa went on to cap off the narration by saying, an individual, along the lines of these words, an, indivi an, an individual is tested according to his levels of iman. An individual is tested according to his levels of righteousness, according to his levels of wara, according to his levels of taqwa. When you look at the stories of the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, from Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. Why? Our own beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wasalam, they were all tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was orphaned at a very young age. He loses his father even before he was born. And then he loses his mother. He goes under the care of his grandfather, loses his grandfather, loses his uncle, loses his beloved wife, loses so many of his children. He was chased from the land where he was born. He goes to Taif and he was stoned by the people of Taif. Allahu Akbar. So many trials, trial after trial. But the Anbiya alayhim salatu wasalam, they taught us all a very important lesson. And that is to never ever waver. Do not ever lose hope. <laughs> forward with positivity for no doubt you have Allah by your side you have nothing at all to worry about the one who places his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah azza wa jal is sufficient for him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best disposal of all of our affairs so let us place our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that I conclude may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our sins may he accept our good deeds and just as how he unites us here may he unite us in the gardens of Sunnah with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam ameen wa akhir da'wa yani alhamdulillah wa alayhi wa sallam